Howdy guys, welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. This beauty behind me is a 1957 auto car DC 75 or DC 103, depending on which tag you look at on the truck. I'm not actually sure which one it really is. Anywho, in the last episode on this truck, you saw me crack open all the gear cases and drain a crap load of water out of my transmission, which I said some prayers and was hoping that, uh, you know, the water hadn't caused any damage, but when I started flushing all the sludge out of the bottom of the case, I found a bunch of needle bearings and it was apparent that there's definitely damage done. So that coupled with all the body work that needs to be done to the cab means that we should just go ahead and get this cab yanked off of here and make life 10 times easier to pull the transmission out because we're going to have to tear that tranny down and see what exactly is going on in there. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's get to it. So. The firewall, I guess, is the first place we should start disconnecting things. I'm going to leave whatever I can attached to the cab, um, make life easier, just disconnect things that uh, have to stay. There are only four bolts attaching the cab to the chassis, which is nice. Two bolts here, one and one. And then, a little dark in here for you guys to see, but... There's one right here on the back side of this flange on both sides of the truck. So after we have all our wires, hoses, etc. disconnected and our four bolts off, we'll drag this guy outside, use the old crane truck over yonder to cherry pick this cab clean off. I think we have everything disconnected from the cab except for the four mounting bolts and I'm sure those are just going to be a treat so sit back and watch me struggle. <laughs> they might come right off. What do I know? I know I'm lying to myself if I'd say those are coming off. <clears throat> I think it's turning a little. 
It's a shame, but there's no way to get the impact in here. If I had a wobble extension, I could probably make it. Might end up cutting them. Holy crap! I thought there was no way in the world that sucker was moving. Not only did it move, it got like loose. Oh, there's a little access panel here I didn't even see. Maybe. May God bless the guy that came up with a cordless impact, because good gravy, that would have been a job with a ratchet now. Ugh, it is loose. <clears throat> Getting it out of there seems to be a problem. There it goes. That's one out of four. On to bolt number two, hopefully we have as good luck on this side as we did on the last side. I was pretty impressed on the last side. Fire in the hole. sucker was seriously tight there's like a little bit of wiggle going on in the whole cab as I'm going down here this whole cross member looks like it's completely rotted through so that's definitely not good definitely want to replace this cab if I can find a replacement so you... man that nut is smoking she was a little tight all right, well, here's our last two bolts. I'm gonna attempt to uh, ghost wrench it here. Don't have enough arms to be everywhere at the same time. Ready? Did it work? Hooray, it worked! <laughs> Tell you what, I get pretty good at doing some stuff solo that really requires two people. Last bolt, here we go. Hey, hey. All right. That is it. I believe this cab is ready to lift. That is exciting. Well now, yesterday has given way to today, and we are ready to pull the cab. I got my lovely assistant here. First thing we need to do, is yank this girl outside so we can uh, get the crane over top of it and pick that cab off. But I don't know how to work with this. I'm gonna put the wife in the big orange crush here and uh, pretty much just set her free. <laughs> it's like driving a big car, a really, really big car. I'm not good at driving. That's true. All right. Why can't you buy nice things that I don't have to worry about? Because if I bought a nice one of these, I'd spend $100,000 on it. Rusty. Look, it looks like there's a bullet hole. I think it is. It is? I think so. Figure it out. I mean, it's simple. Figure it out. Okay. Pick the bucket up. Push that other lever forward. Dump out. Yeah. Push that forward. 
dump out the crap that you picked up. Huh? You picked up stuff when you did that, so dump it out. There you go. All right. Curl it back all the way. All right, now this is your gear selector. You're in first, and this is forward and reverse. So ups forward, reverse is back. So you're gonna go straight back for like 20 feet. Well, I gave half a mind to letting her come in here and pick this thing out of here, but uh, it's her first time. Tight spot. Probably not a good idea. So. We got it out from underneath the roof which is all we really needed to do i don't need the whole thing out here so we're gonna pull the crane truck over here now get it set up and get ready to pick this cab off
got everything pretty well set up here. We're gonna actually lift the hood off the truck first. If I had another guy like my size here, we could just lift it off easier, but it's a little heavy for her and I don't wanna drop it or bang it up or anyway, so we'll hook some straps on it, and just pick it up how it is. Okay, that went pretty well, getting the hood off there. I think we're ready to lift the cab. I got a little, little frisky with that ball there, so she's still swinging around and waiting for it to settle down. But I'm gonna basically run the straps. I'm gonna roll down the windows a little bit, I think. Run the straps on top of the window glass. And uh, that way I'm picking up the doors and the top of the cab at the same time. I think that's the strongest way to do it. we got the cab free took a little bit of wiggling and watching and finessing but we got it up off there I don't think we heard anything either amazingly Well, there we go. We got the cab off in one piece. Managed not to break anything. Got it sitting on a pallet all nice and everything. 
wife did a good job for her first time swamping to a crane worked out good and there is the beast as she sits now with no driver's quarters what a beauty looks cool even without a cab still <laughs> Nothing to it now, but to shove it back in here under the roof, and then we can start thinking about taking this tranny out. I'm sure that's going to be another escapade all, in, all to its own. Well, now that the cab's off and we got her pushed back in the shop here, I'm going to clean the top of this transmission cover off, and then we're going to have to unbolt the auxiliary shifter, and then we should be able to take the bolts out of the cover here, and the whole cover just come off the transmission, and we should be able to get a pretty good peek down inside and see what the real damage is. Pulling this transmission won't be too bad now that the cab's off, but it's still something I'd like to avoid. Since the last video was posted, a lot of people suggested, hey, those needle bearings might have come from a failed PTO, which could be why they removed the winch from this truck, which does kind of make sense, uh, but I'm not really going to bet my life on that. I'm, I'm betting we still got some pretty good damage inside of this transmission. A lot of people said that the truck must have been flooded. I don't know that. I can't see any other way that the water would have gotten in there. Uh, like I said, the shifter boot was good as well as it's been... Uh, you know, it had a cab over it, you know, so it really shouldn't have let any water down into the shifter. Anyways, let's get this cover yanked off and see what the damage is. There we go. I'm telling you, I'm not affiliated with gear wrench at all. I wish I was. But their stuff holds up phenomenally. I abuse this set constantly. Knock on wood. Haven't broken a socket yet. go ahead and draw these bolts out hopefully before this thunderstorm sets in on us and try to get out of here see what we got behind this door I'm betting it's not a trip to Hawaii before we pop this cover off of here I want you guys to go down to the comments and let me know if you think it's gonna be complete loss or if you think the transmission is gonna be more remarkably okay or if you think it's going to be uh, total rebuild time. There we go. I think that was the last bolt. You guys ready to pull back the curtain and see what's behind the door? Shoo, man, that sky's getting dark. I think this storm might have some tigers in it. The old tin roof's gonna get to talking here any second, so you guys are probably gonna have a hard time understanding me, but I'll do my best to speak loud for you. Good Lord, is it coming down. That rain was intense. It just let up and just now. I'll bet you that water's six or eight inches deep right there. Man, is it coming down. Whew. Glad I got me a building. <laughs> Albeit I wasn't staying very dry in it. 
let's hurry up and pop this cover off of here see what's underneath of it and then i can load up my crap and get out of here because it's supposed to just keep on doing this all day i think there might be a bolt up here i missed Aha, i found it the last bolt we we're missing So crusted over you can't even see it there we go oh that's a longer one too there we go that's hail That's a big tree falling down in the distance, even better. Hope it's not across my driveway. and determined to get this cover off of here so at least it's a nice and sunny day today may have gotten it See what was holding us up was this shift fork. Uh, apparently wasn't quite in the right position and just wouldn't allow it to slide past this gear. I had to slide this shift fork that direction and uh, it allowed it to come up. So there's what the underside of the cover looks like. It's a little crusty, but not really too bad. The shift forks, you know, they got some wear, but they're not bad. Not real pitted up or rusted or anything. All right, you guys want to have a look? Here's what we're working with. I've already been spinning these gears around a little bit. And I don't see any obvious problems or areas of uh, play. This gear here, I'm not sure what the name for it is, but it, it does seem like it has some deflection in it. That's the only one I've seen any kind of slop like that in. The rest of them all, they all float like they're supposed to. I have the clutch pinned down right now so that we can rotate the input shaft and the output shaft. See, I'm watching all these gears down here in the bottom. You know, that's where the water would have been. And they've got a little bit of oxidation on them, but I don't see anything real obvious. Now I'm hearing something I wasn't hearing before, and I don't know if that's schmoo making noise in there or what, but it sounds like a gravelly bearing which is what we're looking for. Well, it didn't take too long after spinning this thing around a little bit and just playing with the different gear settings. I think, I think I found our problem, or at least part of it. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that there should be minimal to no play in that gear. We've got substantial play. Well, you guys, I guess uh, I guess the silver lining in all of this is that I didn't find any damage on any of these gears. They all look like they're they're really good. There's no chipped or broken teeth. There's no heavy wear patterns. Nothing like that. Um, so hopefully we can just yank this transmission out of here and slap some needle needle bearings in it, which should be readily available, and we can get this thing back on the road. I want to give a big thank you to all my Patreons that are helping support this project. Uh, you guys are definitely making this more of a priority project versus 
I might have not been 60 by the time I had this thing restored otherwise. So a big thank you to all you guys. And if you're interested in donating, and I'm not pushing this in any way, I, I hate that people think I'm begging for money. I created an outlet for people that really wanted to see this truck completed faster to help push that goal. So if you have disposable income and you really want to push this truck to get it done because you want to see it for some personal reason or just think it's cool, there is a link in the description, but I'm not pressuring anybody to donate to that. So I'm not sure how quickly I'm going to get back onto this transmission. It's probably going to be at least a couple months. I have a bunch of other loose ends I'm trying to tie up here. As you guys know, I've got a bunch of open projects, things I need to wrap up and get done. I need to paint my big loader. I need to paint the grader. I've got a skid steer attachment behind you guys there I need to fix. I've got more stuff than I can shake a stick at to fix. So. I'm going to let this thing marinate for a little bit while I'm still looking for a cab and a few other pieces for it, and uh, we'll pick up, pick up when the time comes. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so I can see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.